Welcome back to What Are T-Nibs for General Disturbance. This is a Brigetto M35 Mod 46. It's the Tier 8 Italian Premium Medium Tank. It's located on the south spawn of Ensk under the command of Girolo 65. Game on. 19mm gun, auto reloader, three shells in the magazine at any one time until, of course, you use them up. And when you do load, use them, they get automatically reloaded, but at differing times for each shot. Now, he's capable of 240 Alpha with each round. If it does connect, that's the Alpha. It's only got 212 millimeters of pen with the standard rounds. It does do more penetration with the premium. get through 259 millimeters with the premium rounds but you have to reload the entire mag if you're going to use them most people use standard ammo and they uh, switch to the premium when they get uh, towards the end of the game now the best thing is to actually only fire two at any one time because that third shell takes an awful long time to reload batch at 25 or oh, he didn't time that one very well if he timed it just a fraction of a second earlier, I'm pretty sure he would have connected. And he's got a full mag now, he's ready to go. Picking his moment. Ensk is not a very friendly map to Artie, but it certainly is friendly to tanks. And he's got his first major hit on that Progesso to the north. Oh, and they're firing back. They're trying to get the top of his turret as well. And you can see there is a Coppola there, which is actually fairly easy to pen. Oh, that didn't go well, but he managed to squeeze between them. Can he get a shot? Yes, he does. Through the turret of the Progetto. And in fact, actually, he was going for the Coppola. They can probably connect with those two guys. Now he can. Thin armor. Here we go. Waiting for the third shell. And he gets a kill there, gets the second one in, and, well, he only got the one kill because the second Pajetto was killed by the Skoda T-50. But he's doing well so far. They've got three kills on their team, and the enemy still hasn't got anything. It's a third man there. Now, you might have difficulty trying to get through the armor on the third man. Do you have to pick your spot? Go for a weak spot. The third man just got hit. There's no RT in this game, so he doesn't have to worry about that. The bat chat took a round. There he goes again. He's on the run. Remember, that's a 105mm on that tank. Oh, didn't connect with that one, though. Bat chat stopped. He's sitting behind a destructible building, though, Gerardo. Oh, and the enemy's down. Okay, so we can go for the Ferdinand. The Ferdinand's down. And that means now they are ahead by four tanks. They've got the field. They just need to deal with the enemy in the town. Oh, we just took a round from a, a phase one, but luckily only got a critical hit through the tracks. Yeah, there's the problem. Okay, we've got a nice four down there as well. It's a tier 10 game. He's tier eight tank, which means he's going to get extra XP for every higher tier tank that he hits. 10% for each tier. He's been spotted again. Okay, enemy T95 just went down. Taken out by the Shrek. He's going to try and take out this IS-4 from behind. No, he's decided not to. Instead, he goes around the buildings to try and catch him from a different angle. The guy's hiding behind the building and we only see the side of the vehicle. But that's enough to get around in. He's trying to tell the Shrek to fall back, but the Shrek's in the right spot. It's that Skoda he needs to deal with now. One into the engine bay. Two into the engine bay. Go for the third. Yes, he gets it. And another kill. Okay, we've got 7032 and an ST1. 703 is another tier 8, so you won't get extra XP from that. The ice is still there. The 
Okay, he's almost got his third shell. Now he's the third shell in. Okay, he's got the rear of the IS-4. Didn't manage to get the shell through the tracks, though. If he got it through the drive wheel, I think that might have immobilized the IS-4 and made him an easy kill. But he's going to come up behind him now because he's only a two-shot. Okay, first shell. One into the engine bay. Second one in goes and kills him. Now, we can see the 7032 off in the distance, but I think he wants that A phase one. He's tier nine. And there's an ST1 over here as well. The ST1 is a tier nine as well. It's behind the building. Okay, so he can kill the 703 with one shot. Or is he going to go for the A phase one? No, he wants the A phase one. Okay, A phase one. Go one through the turret. Goes for the turret again. Goes for the hull. Gets the kill. Unfortunately, yes, one round from the ST1 went into his tracks, but he didn't lose any hit points. Now he's in reload. Centurion is a one shot. And he does get it. And that means there's only one enemy left. It's the ST1. And Girolo wants that because he's on five kills. And if he does get that one, he gets a top gun. And he does. Excellent game from Girolo. Ace tanker in that game. Yes, he's got the M with the scrolls underneath. When you get the scrolls underneath, that's the first time. You never get them again. But that is his first ace tanker. He also got a fire for effect for doing more damage than the hit points for his own vehicle. A duelist for taking down two tanks who damaged him. A bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got nine in that one. And he got a couple of other medals as well. He got one epic medal and one battle hero. The epic medal is an Oskins medal. And that's because he killed three enemy tanks or tank destroyers in a battle with a what which were one tier higher than his own and he did that in a medium tank and the other medal is a battle hero medal that's the top gun for getting at least six kills his win eight in that game six thousand and sixty five super unit come standard let's have a look at team score and see where he was well, he didn't get the highest damage in that game. The IS-4 that he took out, he got 4,065 hit points of damage. It's a particularly deadly tank with a lot of armor. Uh, the second highest damage in the game went to the Batch at 25 ton. Yes, that 105mm gun can do an awful lot of damage if he gets enough shots off. And yes, he does have a rather large magazine. 3,748 hit points of damage went to him. And the third highest damage in the game went to the T-30, who got 3,650 hit points. But we can see that uh, Girolo was actually in fifth place, because the Skoda T-56 managed to get more than hit points than him as well. Only 15 hit points more, but that put him in fourth place and Girolo in fifth. Um, so, when it came to kills, that's Girolo. Yes, he got six kills out of that one. Three kills went to the AE Phase 1 on the enemy team, and two kills went to the Batchat 25 ton on his own team, the Shrek, the Skoda T-50, the IS-4, and the ST-1. When it came to base XP, that's Girolo. Yes, he got that one as well. So he, at least he got the top in two columns. 1,549 went to Girolo, 1,368 went to Cardian and in the Shrek. Yes, see, he was doing a lot of damage, that guy, and he did take down the T-95, and the third highest base XP went to the T-30, who got 952. Girello fired 26 rounds in the game, got 19 direct hits on the enemy, 17 penetrations, 3,585 hit points of damage, and all of it was at close range. He received five hits from the enemy, two of which penetrated three non-penetrations. It's very lucky about that. Some of those penetrating shots were shot at him uh, underneath railway carriages or uh, a very unlucky shot that came from the uh, ST-1 uh, while he was trying to kill the A phase one. And luckily, they, they went into the tracks. So that's what absorbed them. But I'm afraid the Progetto really doesn't have much in the way of armor, but you'll see that in a short while. 240 hit points of damage blocked by armor, one enemy vehicle spotted, eight enemy vehicles damaged and six killed, 579 hit points of spotting assist in that game. He earned 108,156 credits from the battle and 54,078 credits from personal reserves, 162,234 credits altogether. After repair, ammunition, resupply, and consumables, he took away a profit of 144,303 credits. 
He got 2,323 XP for the battle, times 2 for the first victory, 4,648 for completing a mission, 232 for this being a premium vehicle, and 1,161 from personal reserves bonus. He took away 10,688 experience points altogether, and he was pretty happy about that, as you can see there. He loved that one. It was very fast, very rapid battle. It actually only lasted 6 minutes and 11 seconds and 6 kills. Very nice indeed. So, let's have a look at the armor profile first for this vehicle. Okay, this is the collision model and we can see straight away the lower plate is actually 80 millimeters. Uh, effective 99 because it's slightly angled back. It's not that bit good. Uh, but the front ar frontal armor on the upper plate is only 60 millimeters, giving you about 82. So this is actually quite good compared to the upper plate. Um, in fact, the only place really you don't want to hit one of these tanks is actually on the mantlet where it's actually 80 millimeters impacted armor. Uh, so yes, that's quite tough to get through. The, the sides of the turret you can see here is 60 millimeters. Sides of the vehicle, 50 millimeters. So it's very thin. Uh, the weak spot when you're firing at the thing, if you're firing at a distance, is to try and go for the cupola. It's only 60 millimeters armor, and that's what he was trying to do when he attacked those two projettos who are out in the field area. Okay, so the rear of the vehicle, very weak indeed. It's only 20 millimeters. The engine deck, if you happen to be firing at this in your Anati, is only 25 millimeters, coming out effective 30 because I'm angling it there slightly. Back of the turret. 20 millimeters. So any RT should be able to land a shell directly on top of this tank. They will penetrate through and they should be able to get some sizable damage. Now, if I go to the live model and we'll have a look at that and see what happens. Well, you can see any 90 millimeter round is just going to go plowing straight through. There's no problem whatsoever. Even if you angle the tank, it's going to be difficult. You'd have to angle very acutely to get a ricochet off this armor. That's one of the weak things about this tank. Uh, when it was originally designed, or rather the draft was um, designed, um, it was supposedly supposed to be a 35-ton tank. And the idea was to make the armor as light as possible so you could carry a very big gun and have a decent engine so you could move fairly quickly. This tank does move quickly. It's got a 55 kilometer an hour top speed, and it's got a decent 90 millimeter doing 240 alpha. But the problem is that it lacks the armor, and as a consequence... You've got to hope that if the tank does fire at you, it hits these tracks. Because if it doesn't hit the tracks, it's going to go plowing straight through the vehicle and you're going to take a damage. Let's have a quick look at the modules. Okay, as you can see, driver up front on the right-hand side. We've got a big ammo rack right next door to him. But of course, that's where the armor is actually fairly good. You can see that there's, more, uh, there's another ammo rack further back in the tank, directly underneath the center of the turret. And there's an ammo rack directly in the bustle at the rear of the turret. The gunner is on the right-hand side. The tank commander is on the left-hand side. He's the one in that big cupola, which, of course, as I said, is a weak spot because it's only 60 millimeters of armor. You can see on this side, we've got the radio next door to the commander, where it is where it should be. And the gunner's got that viewport on this side. Loader, well, he's feeding the shells into the auto-reloader mechanism, but he's taking them out of the ready rack and feeding them into the system at any one time. At the rear of the tank, you can see the engine sandwiched between two fuel tanks with the transmission directly behind. So you can take out the engine with one shot to the rear, but... Uh, if you do, you're going to have to get it through the tracks area, and of course that's the only likely place that you're going to stop around. Ideally, you want to try and aim for the rear of the turret on a Progetto, or if you are firing from the front, you could probably get through the frontal armor and into that Amorak there, or the one directly behind it. So firing, if you're looking at it from the front, the left-hand side of the tank to go through the Amoraks on the, the hull, and if you want to get it through the ammo rack at the back, you want to aim for the probably the right-hand side to take out the uh, gunner and maybe the loader and the uh, ammo rack directly behind him. So that's where the modules are on the Progetto. So well done to Girolo65 for getting his first ace tanker. But that's not the end of the game because we've got another replay for you featuring the Progetto 46. In the second replay, it's a Progetto 46 
on the Eastbourne of Stud Yankee under the command of CL Vamu. I hope I've spelled out his name right. Huh? But anyway, he's in platoon with GT Venom in a Borsig. Okay, there's GT Venom. And he's headed off towards this set of bushes. Try and get early spots or is he cutting the corner? He's going to cut the corner. That's very cheeky actually because if you do that, there's a good chance you might get spotted by a light tank on the enemy team. But he's managed to get across without being spotted. Looks like he's going to get to the centre line before the enemy light tanks do. It's a bit of a danger trying to cross past this church. It appears the enemy hasn't come to the other side on the south end. Oh, no, they are there. STB-1, he fires one 90mm round in. You'll notice that Vanyu, uh, well, I'll call him Vanyu from now on, actually is only loaded APCR. And that's because they do give you better penetration. Standard rounds is only 212 millimeters. The premium APCR do 259 millimeters of ar ammunition, um, armor. So it's a lot more. It's, that's very important when you end up in a tier 10 battle. And he has landed in a tier 10. And yes, he gets another round into the STB-1, which is a tier 10 medium. Oh, Ferdinand pumps one into his lower plates. Notice he's trying to restrict himself from only firing one or two rounds in any one moment. Keep his maximum fire rate up. You get much, much better DPM if you only fire two rounds. It's a faster reload time than the uh, single shot. Oh, now he managed to get around into the STB-1, but he was spotted when he pulled back and the STB-1 missed. It's a lover just the other side over there. Can't get a shot at the moment. An enemy tank has gone into the dip. It's a T-55A. In fact, the Lover's going into the dip as well, it appears. And okay, now he's in and he can shoot into the rear of the T-55 and he's got the kill. Or did he? No, he didn't get the kill. The Pachetto 65 got the kill, but now he can punch holes in this Lover. There's two. Now he does have to hide just for a moment because he's fired three rounds. Now the STB-1 is retreating. But remember that Ferdinand's still around. He's got his first round in. He's really pushing. And there's the Ferdinand. Oh, right, and he gets another round into the Ferdinand. And he gets fired on by the STB, but gets one round out back. And he gets a, a hit in the armor, but he doesn't actually pen. Remember, it's 240 Alpha. Oh, Ferdinand hits him. And he takes another round as well, this time from the Pajetto 46 on the enemy team. So he's having to pull back. In fact, he's being fired on by the enemy tanks up into the north. I don't think he could have stayed by the houses over by uh, near where the third man was last seen, because if he had tried to, I think he would have got fired on from the north. So he actually made the right decision to pull back. There's the third man. Pumps one in from the side. Can he go for the front? Yes, he does. But he takes one round from the STB, and I think he tracked him. Yes, and he's hit again. But this time round, he's lost 777 in total from the STB. And he, his gun's damaged, his track's damaged. He needs to fix the gun to get the accuracy back up again. You can see that Vamu is um, using premium consumables, the spaghetti and the meatballs, because it does give much better performance. Okay. It's gone to the spotting bush. Should be able to get shots on the tortoise. 
going in through the side, trying to go for the weak spot, but changes his mind. And has a quick look around. Can't hit the AMX M454, but he can hit the tortoise. Should be able to pen that. He does. But he pulls out of the bush as soon as he does, because of course he probably would get return fire from the other tanks there. It's a very difficult shot. And he gets him! Takes out the tortoise. So that is his second kill of the game. Now, there's the enemy Progetto, the guy who fired on him earlier. The M454 is not a threat at the moment, but he can put rounds into the char future. That's one. Wasn't spotted by anyone when he did that, so the Progetto is not in a position to see him at the moment. Back down into the dip, it's safer here. I think he does need to go around to get at that Progetto. If he cuts across the distance, he might get spotted by the 53 TP. But he's going to try and do it. He's taking the shortcut. Okay, he's managed to make it across without getting spotted. The STB1 still just behind the cap area. We've got a Char Future 4 up ahead of us. The T95 is going to make a good roadblock for the moment. The enemy Progetto is still there. And that STB1 sitting behind the cap makes it difficult. Oh, he's just spotted an Object 263. Now, if he does fire on this, the STB1 is probably going to fire back at him. And there is the STB1. He's a two-shot. So if he does fire on him, he's going to have to fire twice at least. There's one. Oh, didn't get him with the second one. And he did get a penetration with the next round, but he didn't get the kill. The STB1 is now down to just 90 hit points. So he's got to reload. Unfortunate that that shell did not pen. Oh, he does take the kill. Now he's going to have to try and cut across the gap to get out of the way of that Object 263. Progetto on the enemy team's coming back. He could be seen. Oh, he was. He didn't take into account the Progetto, who was just coming out of that dip to the north. And he saw him as he was cutting across. But his platoon mate is still around, GT Venom. And there's only two enemies left. The Batch Out 155.58 and the Object 263. That was unfortunate, that. And there's the bat chat. And there's the 263. So he's going to give it a go. No, he's not. Because they're both out of the game. And that is the end. It's a victory. Here's the end of battle stats. And that was an ace tanker game for Vamu in the Pajetto 46. Yes, I think we'll call you Vamu from now on because I'm not sure I can pronounce that with the CL at the start. He also managed to get a spotter badge for spotting at least a thousand hit points of damage, a duelist for taking down two tanks who damaged him, a fire for effect for doing more damage than the hit points of his own vehicle, and a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he managed to get six in total. But he also got a Lever Slayer's Medal, and that's for killing two enemy tanks or tank destroyers in a medium tank in one battle, at least one tier higher than his own. His win eight from that game was 8,223, which is Super Unicum standard. Let's have a look at team scores and see where he is. Well, yet again, he didn't get the highest damage in the game. We've got the Progetto 65 with 4,903 hit points. He picked up only a Confederate because he didn't get 20% of the enemy hit pool. The second highest damage went to the enemy AMX M454, 4,620 hit points. And the third highest damage, well, that went to Vamu with 3,964 hit points of damage. When it came to kills, he shared the top spot with the Yag Tiger. They both got three kills apiece. Two kills went to the T95, the Object 261 on his team, who also picked up a Confederate, and the Pajetto 46 on the enemy team, who managed to kill him in the end. Yes, I think it was unwise to pop across that gap when he knew that Progetto was there because the guy could pop up at any moment 
and finish him off. He was very low on hit points. And when it came to base XP, yes, Bam, you got that one with 1,564. The second highest being the standard B, you got 1,157. And they both managed to get over 1,000 base in the game. The third place was the IS-7, who got 962. Uh, and if you look at his platoon mate, the Borsig, yes, uh, VT, was it um, uh, Venom in the end? Yes, he actually, or GT Venom, yes, he managed to get 1,197 hit points of damage. He got one kill and he got 675 base out of the game. Bam, you fired 22 rounds in the game, 19 direct hits, 18 penetrations, 3,964 hit points of damage, of which 1,061 were at more than 300 meters, so some long-range shooting. He did receive five hits, all of them penetrated, I'm afraid, and one hit by way of splash damage as well. Four enemy vehicles were spotted, six enemy vehicles were damaged, three killed, 2,880 hit points of spotting assist. He did 142,766 credits on a premium count, and after repair and ammunition resupply, it took away 37,611 credits profit. Yes, that ammo really cost him 96,800 credits on the APCR ammo. Very expensive. That's why most people buy a standard AP, uh, because, of course, it's just too expensive if you're going to run it competitively. 2,346 XP for the battle, times two for the first victory, 235 for this being a premium vehicle, and 4,927 experience points altogether. So two ace tankers in the Progetto 46. It's a very good medium tank. In fact, it's uh, one of those medium tanks that I would thoroughly recommend people to get because it's so much fun to play. Um, I think the only difference, of course, is that it is a premium, which means that you have to pay for it and so, yes, Wargaming do charge a premium. This was a tank that actually came out during one of their Christmas loot boxes. So uh, they were making it um, uh, very difficult to get. And they've always charged a premium on it since. But it is so much fun to play. Uh, only the crew places don't match the crew places on some of the other Italian tanks, which makes it difficult to use it as a, a crew trainer. But it certainly does generate a lot of credits, so uh, well worth to play it from that point of view. If you enjoyed those two replays, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.